Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? Meteorologist Jonathan Keg is with you. We are talking about the tropics, of course, in this edition of Tropics Watch. It looks a little different than last week. It looks more like the peak of hurricane season as the Hurricane Center is now highlighting four waves as of Sunday, August 28th. We will talk about those four waves, break those down for possible development, and then we're going to look at some of the computer models in this video, especially for one in particular that's in the Central Atlantic, and I will show you where those are in a minute. And then at the end of this video, stick around. We're going to talk about some big time history here, finally on the quiet side and thankfully on the quiet side that it has been a very quiet first half of the hurricane season. Of course, there's still a lot of it to go, but boy, has it been nice to not have to deal with a lot of tropical entities, if you will, over the last couple of months. Again, the last system that we had in the Atlantic Basin was Tropical Storm Colin way back on July 3rd. That's when it dissipated. If you remember, again, that was a little flare-up, that 24-hour storm off the North Carolina coastline that, again, only lasted for 24 hours. All right, so let's get into it. Again, this map looks different, certainly the most colorful map we have had. Now, the bark is a little worse than its bite here. When you just look at this map, we're going to break each one of these down. The northern one, we'll start with this one because it's not going to be a threat to land. This one, about 600 miles to the east of Bermuda. There were a little more organized shower and thunderstorms with this thing last night. Really not so much now. It does have the potential over the next five days, 20% to develop. As it kind of meanders out in the North Atlantic and then drifts north out over the cooler water. So this one not going to be a concern to any landmass. This next one here, this is still well over the African continent. It's going to take a couple of days before it even gets over the open waters. But if you're watching from the Cabo Verde Islands, likely going to bring some gusty thunderstorms to us in the next day or so. And then we'll have the chance to tropically develop over the next five days once the disturbance itself moves out into that yellow shaded area as drawn by the National Hurricane Center. Another yellow area here for a low chance for development over the next five days. There's not a lot of thunderstorm or shower activity at all in the Western Caribbean, but there will be the opportunity for something to develop close to the Yucatan Peninsula or the extreme Western Caribbean over the next five days, impacting Parts of Central America, maybe into Belize, certainly the Yucatan Peninsula, and then maybe getting out into the Bay of Campeche or even drifting into the Eastern Pacific. That is in the realm of possibilities. We'll take a look at some of the model solutions for that as well. And then here is Invest 91L, the newly designated Invest. You see a couple of flare-ups of thunderstorms. You got this little northern entity and then the southern entity here. That is one of the reasons why that development, if any, and now you see that red shaded area by the Hurricane Center, they are giving it a high opportunity for development over the next five days. But it's still likely going to be slow and gradual because there's a couple of different areas of thunderstorms that are going to try to compete to be the dominant center, if you will, or the eventual dominant center. So more likely... The development area is going to be further down the line, but again, early heads up for the Northern Caribbean Islands and the Leeward Islands for sure as we move into Labor Day weekend. So certainly something to just be mindful of. Again, bark worse than its bite now. I want you to know that development, if any, is going to be gradual and slow. So a lot of time to watch this thing if it wants to get its act together. Closer look again, we'll start with that Caribbean disturbance, or really lack thereof right now. Just a few showers going on south of Jamaica. It's going to be in this area where development's going to be possible. Just a few thunderstorms in the western Gulf of Mexico. Those are not expected to develop. Rest of the Caribbean looking very nice. Lots of sunshine in the Caribbean. Finally, we're quieting things down in the windward and leeward islands after that tropical wave last week brought us some gusty thunderstorms into Trinidad and Tobago, getting into Martinique, Dominica, uh, into parts of the leeward islands as well, into the windward islands. Now nice and quiet, at least for the short term. But again, especially in the leeward islands, we're going to be watching this for you guys first up. Again, very disorganized area of thunderstorms, but there are a couple of different little entities, if you will, that makes up a broader 
kind of area of disturbed weather here. That is just one of the reasons, again, why that development will be gradual and slow because there's going to be different competing areas that are trying to become dominant. I want to show you this now. I show you this a lot. This is going to be the European scenario here of the low to mid-level spin in the atmosphere. And what we're looking at here for a developing tropical system is a kind of concise red-orange ball, if you will. So this is going to be starting on today, later in the afternoon, August 28th, the date and the time up at the top of your screen here. Note here, later on, on the 28th, Got to remove my arrows that have gone crazy on me again. That oftentimes happen here on, on Tropics Watch. Uh, get rid of all of these arrows for you so you can see the date. Notice how we still have it kind of stretched out across a pretty broad area. It's not really concise. This other circle here that I have for you, that's for that departing tropical wave that will eventually get out over the Atlantic. And then same deal here. This is going to be a wave. You kind of see the swirls there in the arrows. That's going to be another tropical wave. So by September 1st, we could have five areas highlighted by the National Hurricane Center. I want to show you these. Here's that one that's by Bermuda, or 600 miles to the east of Bermuda. So not really by. It's all relative in a big ocean. But trying to get it to add together as we work our way into September. Here we go with our Central Atlantic disturbance that has the highest potential for development. Certainly, it looks a little better organized, but I want to show you the surface arrows here. This is the wind, not that closed off yet. Still more of that sideways U, so still more of a wavy feature, but it does look a little more developed as we get towards September 1st closing in on the Leeward Islands. So again, just something to be mindful of. And then there's that thing, that other entity that's really weak and not developed on the European that's still weak and undeveloped on the European solution. Now, you may have seen crazy model runs out on social media over the past week. That has been courtesy of the GFS. It's been extremely aggressive with that particular wave. And there's been some really outlandish scenarios throw those out the window. There is still an opportunity for development. It will likely be in and around the Yucatan Peninsula or in the extreme uh, western Gulf of Mexico. So there is still room for a decent storm in that area. But again, just keep in mind, that is the only model that's really developing that one crazy. So that's going to be the outlying scenario, but still certainly something to keep your eye on if you're watching from Belize or the Yucatan or eastern Mexico. And then there's that secondary wave off of Africa. That's the fourth wave. You see above my head there, that's that yellow area uh, in, the, in and around the Cabo Verde Islands on September 1st. And then that fifth wave, uh, that third wave off of Africa. I want to send this further into time here. This is September 3rd. This is the Saturday of Labor Day weekend in the United States. And you see it there. Certainly looking a little more organized. For reference, here is Puerto Rico. There are the Leeward Islands. Here is the Dominican Republic in Haiti. Here is Cuba. There are the Turks and Caicos. So again, just an early heads up of something to watch in and around areas north of the Caribbean. Puerto Rico, the Leeward Islands, into the Turks and Caicos as we get into Labor Day weekend. And then way into the future, we could have something out here closer to the Bahamas, maybe even working its way into the southeast coast. That is way too far into the future to even determine any kind of outcomes. If a cold front or dip in the jet stream gets out there, then it sends it out to sea, which is, of course, what we are rooting for. And then there's that thing by Bermuda that is weakening. There's that wave that is now exiting Africa or will in a day or two. And then a third wave that is way back into the African continent. I want to show you a closer look here. This is going to be the spaghetti models of Invest 91L. And then again, this is the tropical wave that has the highest opportunity to develop. So there we go, August 28th, putting this into the future. There we go into early September. And as we get into September 5th and 6th, that is where we are going to be watching for it to be potentially in this area. Okay, so we have the GFS, the Canadian model on board that we're likely going to have at least some disturbance. Again, strength to be 
a question, an exact location still to be in question is this thing is not developed yet, but somewhere potentially near the Turks and Caicos or the Bahamas, maybe even into the southeast corner of the United States, watching something. Next week's edition of Tropics Watch going to be a big one here because we're going to see the eleva- uh, the evolution, I should say, of this thing. And it's going to be right about in here. So we're going to be watching that closely again for the Leeward Islands and for Puerto Rico, especially for something to be close by. So again, just something to keep in the back of your mind. Just note again that we are in the climatologically speaking highest opportunity for tropical development. As we see, we're on that yellow line now. That represents the you are here line, if you will. And as we get to the first couple of days or the last couple of days of August with the peak officially being, climatologically anyway, September 10th before we start to see, again, climatologically, the, the frequency start to drop. You may have seen at the bottom of your screen, we are chasing down some pretty big numbers historically here. Finally on the low side and thankfully on the low side, the last few years we've been chasing down history for activity or the increase in activity, but now it's thankfully uh, for low activity in the Atlantic. And I want to say there were a lot of comments last week about climate change this or climate change that being what climate change. I want to caution to you that climate change has nothing to do with the frequency of storms. It's still all based on the environment and larger scale things like El Nino and La Nina and the Madden Julian oscillation. It has nothing to do with the frequency. Saharan dust and wind shear have been the main reasons why we have been on the quieter side this hurricane season. And I also caution we still have the more active half of the season to go. So before we throw out any of those predictions that Noah had came up with, had come up with for the preseason in the middle of the season update, there's unfortunately still a lot of season to go. I'm hoping it stays like this, but you never know. We're also chasing down this number here, the latest first hurricane to develop over the last 30 years. We are already in the third spot, being August 28th, and we are still adding to that day by day because I don't think we're going to see a hurricane tomorrow or the next day. Maybe as we get into the 1st of September, give or take, we could have that first hurricane potentially. And again, that's still an outside shot for that to happen because of the environment and because that system in particular could be competing with a bunch of different swirls, if you will, for the dominant center. But the latest first hurricane we've had since way back in 1992 was September 11th. That was of the 2013 year. Something may pique your interest here as you look at this map or look at this list. You see there the fifth The fifth spot here on August 25th for the latest first hurricane of the season. One of those years was 1992. Remember what happened in 1992. We just had the 30-year mark, if you will, of Hurricane Andrew developing and moving through South Florida. That was in 92. That was the first hurricane. That was the first named storm. It doesn't matter how quiet a season has been, unfortunately. That has nothing to do with the intensity uh, to come. So we certainly hope that we don't have to deal with another situation like that. And if we do end up getting strong hurricanes, that they are flung right back out to sea and they bother no one. No shipping lanes and, of course, no land. The other crazy stat that we have is that August is one of the more active times of a hurricane season. We've not had any tropical depressions, tropical storms. Certainly no hurricanes in August. We've got a couple of days to go, but if we make it through the entire month without a depression, name, storm, or hurricane, that would be the first time that has happened in the month of August with none of those things since way back in 1997. It has been a long time. Let's hope it stays that way again. Things are turning a little more active. It's not to scare anybody. It's not to get people freaked out. We're just watching these closely. Again, that map, the bark is worse than its bite. We're watching it closely. It's something to always pay attention to at this time of the year. But just know that development is going to be possible now as we move into Labor Day weekend. That's going to be up the weekend of September 3rd 
and fourth and in that general window. All righty, guys, this has been the latest edition of Tropics Watch. If you're new to the channel, please hit the like, subscribe button, hit the alert bell. You will be alerted anytime that we post new content. And of course, we will see you again next time. Post in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from this morning. And again, thanks for watching this latest edition of Tropics Watch. Take care, guys.